Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take few minutes for ourselves to understand how this meditation will help for us to develop our spiritual foundation and at the same time why we have to practice meditation. So when it comes to our life, we always have to remember this life depends on many conditions. That conditions we call worldly conditions. And these worldly conditions never going to do any favor to you or to me. And at the same time, even though we do many kind of activities, the good things, we have to remember the world sometimes not going to be good for us because most of people think when we do good, so oh, the result should come good right away. Sometimes it's not like that. Maybe when you do something good, you have to do it with the clarity and without any expectations, thinking that the, the, you're going to receive the good. So, and another thing is, you have to develop a wisdom through this life, not to escape from situations. And at the same time, it is not, not just accepting things as it is. So, because then there is no wisdom going to come. Oh, whatever happened, oh, let it happen. It's not like that. So it called radical accept. So radical accept means when something happened, you accept it. But you're not going to accept it, it because of the nature or it because of it. You have to surrender to it. Not because you don't have any other options. Not because you are powerless or you are fearful. So radical acceptance means you deeply see, you accept it, but at the same time you deeply see the very reasons why it happened like this. 
and sometimes our own skillful or unskillful behavior bring some kind of situations to us, invite some situations to us. And sometimes our healthy or unhealthy that thinking pattern bring the situations to us. And sometimes our own profitable or unprofitable actions bring the situations to us. So then just accepting is doesn't work because if you keep doing the same thing again and again and again, if you keep doing, if you are keep doing the same unprofitable action, if you are keep doing the, the same unhealthy action, if you are keep doing the same kind of that actions doesn't work for you, then the outcome, whatever the result come, is going to happen again and again and again is the same. So then just accepting things doesn't work. So that's why when you, you, you don't escape from situations, you accept it, but it is not just acceptance. Thoroughly, deeply, you, you observe it, investigate it and see even not with the outside situation, but within yourself, how you came to this situation. So that is different because most of time, and we are thinking that outside the people should accept us. And sometimes we have no capability to be with them. So if it, if it is so, then we have to fix within ourselves. So that, that's why seeing yourself, recognizing yourself is very necessary. So in that way, one of the skills that you have to develop, that is the most important quality that you have to keep in you, flexibility. So within yourself, not towards the outside, within yourself to be flexible, inside you. So that way it open your heart, open your mind, you know, to go deeper into situations and recognize that your contribution to the people, society, environment, and even yourself to the life. So that is the basic background you have to develop. So in, when it comes to meditation, how it help for you? Because in, when, in, in life, there are two ways that we, we experience things. One is the very ordinary way of understanding or the recognizing. So that depends on senses. So ordinary consciousness. When you see something, you recognize it. When you hear something, you recognize it. So it always based with your senses. So that is what we call the tranquility state. The ordinary consciousness depend on senses. 
So practicing little by little, little by little, you can get into that and you can sharp it and you can clear it and you can maximize that experience. So it, it works only, only for conventional level. It allows you to deeply see things as it is. Ordinary level of understanding or the recognition. And another thing is this analytical recognition. So what is the analytical recognition? Just imagine you see something. So that seeing or that experience based with the senses, but deeply you observe with your mind thoroughly deeply to the depth without depending on what you see. You are not become very limited to what you see, but you experience the, the entire process as one. And in that level, you are capable to go beyond the perception. So that is what the, the Vipassana knowledge. But mostly conventional life, we are so comfortable with the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind experience. And even we are not sometimes reached to the level to see things as it is. We are so far away from that reality, that moment of experience because our mind sometimes depend on the past or the future. So the thing is, when the mind depends on the past or the future, what happened, this ordinary consciousness or the tranquility mind doesn't work. So then when you see something, when you hear something, when you smell something, when you taste something, when you feel something, can you experience it without bringing your past or the future thoughts to that moment? Can you experience it without the help from the past or the future? So in that very level, your moment of awareness connected to the moment of experience. So the awareness, that means the recognition. So you, you know you are there. And then what happened in that very moment, you are capable to go beyond the, the object that what you experience. So it as example, it like this. So if you start to if you start if if you are capable to listen to the sound, what happens even though sound come out of this cup with this pen? When you really, it is this sound is a moment of experience and it come to your ear and even you seeing it when you are really connected to the sound. Your consciousness not going to be with the cup. It detach from the cup and go into the sound. So that's the present moment of tranquility, the, the experience. 
when you really into that even it go beyond little bit the object and deeply be with the moment of experience just try it again listen to the sound if you really listen to the sound you can't think about the cup so like that that is what the tranquility state does your mind settle down with the the present moment but that's not enough for you why because once your mind get out of it it again going to be with this hindrance so in the vipassana level you deeply go into that sound and the cup and the moment of the hand the pen the moment of experience that everything you take together so then what happens your mind not going to be with just only the sound and the entire process come together then any anything is not going to become your mental object your mind become free from all the objects so let's go into that vipassana level of experience what is the vipassana level of experience so the tranquility is moment of experience means so you focus to the sound so the vipassana level of experience means you don't focus to the sound you see the cup you see the pen you see the hand and you see the sound and this everything you put it to one picture and in that very level you are conscious but you are not going to settle down with anything so just just focus your mind to the cup the pen the sound the hand this everything this your consciousness is not settled down with anything so in that very level if you are, even that if you have the effort to get into that completely your system going to change different it is start to act in different ways your awareness your consciousness your recognition go it's like it's like this that if you go in this way focus to the sound your consciousness go from this level from here to here here to here that's it but when the vipassana level it's go to all the directions your consciousness it not go into one direction all the every direction it go and capture everything so that is the different with the tranquility and the vipassana so this both you can empower or the maximize by practicing little by little little by little but if you look very carefully when you are don't put attention what happens your mind get tangled so then you going to experience it's kind of like a with the worldly nature and it's kind of like a welding binding you become worldly so with the world you 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 go with it you always ponder you always into something worldly and it's it's kind of like a welding it's kind of like a binding so you are, just imagine your eye ear nose tongue body mind always 
beyond you towards something binding it's getting kind of like a welding and that is what become world world so then you always go towards something or depend from something so when you depend from something what happens when it change you have to change but the thing is this change we don't see it we always hold in our mind this experience uh, as unchangeable entity kind of like we have the idea to cement always concrete our experience so through the meditation it release it it untangle little by little little by little and give the clarity yourself to not to to get tangled not to go towards something but to withdraw your eye ear nose tongue body mind from the outside and so then the by the time when you are capable to really settle down with the the moment or centered from that center you are capable to experience this entire moment without holding or centering grasping to any mental object so that is where you can see very true nature the bottom of this impermanence and that is where you can see this unsatisfactoriness and that is where you can see selflessness so the experiencer and the experience both interconnected and no separation without experience there is no experience without experience there is no experience and just imagine when it come to with your eye ear nose tongue body mind without your eye ear nose tongue body mind there is no seeing hearing a smell taste feel or thinking and without eye ear nose tongue body mind object there is no way that your i can exist see that the connection deeply so if you are capable to little by little understand that you are not going to depend on someone else action and that is where you come to understand you help others but you don't think they should help you it's a totally different way of understanding remember this you help others and then you can apply this principle to all the good things you help others but you don't think others should help you and then that way you become generous you don't think or you don't expect others should be generous to you you become good to others but you don't think you don't expect you don't hope others should help you and you become profitable you become a skillful you become helpful you become healthy for 
others but you have zero level loss of expectations you have zero level of hopes others should do the same to you so this is how your mind start to become stronger and get nourish and expand so when it come to that level what happens deeply from each and every cell entire body you start to transform so what is that transformation you start to detach from the moment of joy happiness satisfaction but you start to increase the power inside you that's a totally di two different ways in the conventional level we always look for happiness satisfaction and with the others and depending from others depending from something we always go with the moment of happiness and satisfaction but now you are any more not depending from others you yourself give up that moment of happiness and the satisfaction you are more into develop the deeper power inside you so when it come to the power means not the physical strength not the kind of like any material strength because conventional level that is what the these people think as power money physical strength and the the leadership those are but when it come to the the very essence of life the real power is wisdom Just imagine if there is a king, if there is no wisdom, what will happen? If there is a person have this all the things, all the power, but there is no wisdom, what will happen? So that's why wisdom is the power. And then look into yourself. because sometimes when it come to joy happiness satisfaction we become ignorance we give up the wisdom and we go into that level that's not the most of time conventional life we do that's why we always work for others that's why we always go behind others so then develop yourself true wisdom and it is just within yourself and that is what going to be with you like the shadow never leave your body so have something for you keep something for you and that what you hold should that what you develop should be profitable and that profitable skill through this practice little by little little by little step by step you develop so then when it come to observe the inhalation exhalation don't look for deeper inner satisfaction or the comfort always bring your attention and start to experience that moment it should be radical experience the radical experience mean you look deeply from every angle how this happen like this without personalizing without hold into any point of view related to this is me you look from each and every angle 
from each and every corner to the depth without missing any part. So that's why even when it comes to observing the inhalation, exhalation, from beginning, the middle, the end, or you observe entire continuation of the inhalation, entire continuation of the exhalation. And see, what is this experience? And then you will see, little by little, little by little, you are capable to, to recognize something. That what you recognize is bringing deeper wisdom to yourself. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. Bring your attention to your body and scan it to toes yourself and say, Supateva, oh, may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. And when it happens through the sensation, recognize it, do nothing extra.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, the stars. Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally, repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion 
from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodan tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta anumodan tu sabba sampati siddhya Maya Dhamma Nudhamma Patipatthiya Buddham Pujemi Dhammang Pujemi Sangang Pujemi Atdaya Imaya Patipatthiya Jati Jaravya Dimaranam Habari Bunjissami Idamme Punya Kammanga Zavakya Vahang Bless you.